Hey there, I'm Pierce Beisinger with Portland Mountain Rescue. Welcome to the MRA Conference Video Educational Series. This year in 2021, we'll be covering patient packaging. Every year as we begin this series, we'll be picking up a new topic to invest in our members and learn from each other how we can better do mountain rescue. In the following video, you'll see several scenarios performed by MRA teams in a safe and efficient manner to help remove and extract patients from the wilderness also covered during the conference were a couple lectures performed by Appalachian Mountain Rescue Team and myself with Portland Mountain Rescue covering various components of hypothermia and spinal cord protection with highlights of patient packaging in those lectures as well. We have to ask ourselves when it comes to patient packaging, what is our purpose? Is it rigid immobilization or are we trying to perform spinal cord protection? If we're using a SAM collar, for example, using it with the goal of spinal motion restriction or spinal cord protection is a reasonable pursuit but not rigid immobilization. Indeed, the Wilderness Medical Society practice guidelines even advocate for the use of a soft collar in the backcountry environment. Shifting our focus to hypothermia, we wanna make sure that we mitigate the methods of heat loss with our patient packaging design. These include conduction, convection, evaporation, and radiation as demonstrated in the cartoon to the left. The treatment goals of hypothermia are to prevent further heat loss and to help evacuate them from the environment where heat loss is occurring. As we design our patient packaging scenario, we wanna make sure that we consider how we access the patient and what that allows us to bring into the environment. How does our patient package allow us to mitigate the terrain? Does our package offer uh, heat loss mitigation? And what does the thing weigh? How comfortable is the team using it? So this is a typical design of a burrito wrap as demonstrated in multiple wilderness medicine references where you see a tarp and some insulation uh, mitigating heat loss. The goals of a protection include not only providing patient care, and also patient evacuation, but also safe and efficient patient packaging. Let's take a look at one of the burrito wrap designs performed by Portland Mountain Rescue. Here you see an eight by 10 tarp with a folded edge at the foot of the patient. That prevents snow from sliding up over the litter into the patient's uh, micro environment and uh, thereby allowing them to keep their feet warm and, and keep the rest of the package warm. The top of the package is clover leafed, allowing access to the airway into the patient's face. You can see as you look closely at the package that there is webbing that's crisscrossed and tied, going through both of the tie-in points of the patient's harness. There's a focused area of the webbing girth hitched through both the harness tie-in points. Another component that can be added to the burrito wrap is the vacuum mattress. The vacuum mattress uh, helps with preventing heat loss through conduction. It provides an insulative barrier against the ground. It also uh, limits mobility and provides spinal cord protection as well as protection to extremity fractures in the lower leg. It also prevents and inhibits the patient from sliding up and down uh, inside with all of the straps that can hold the patient in place. It facilitates patient transfers with the handles that are on the side to remove them from one environment to the other or to transfer them from one litter to another. You can add to the vacuum mattress ready heat blankets or similar uh, companies that allow the patient to be warmed inside the burrito wrap for several hours at a temperature of 100 degrees, further mitigating heat loss. Finally, we arrive at the litter. Most teams are familiar with the litter. It does come in various configurations, including the wheeled litter you see on the left, and it's also skiable as you see on the right. The SCED is approved by the FAA for raises with helicopters and is also useful for uh, ground transfers and uh, moving patients over varied terrain. It does require a substantial padding on the bottom to mitigate the uh, bumps and lumps of, of the terrain causing further injury to the patient. I hope that some of these highlights uh, bring forward a focus on the different types of patient packaging and the multiple modalities by which patients can be loaded for transfer and extraction from the environment. Thank you for your service and your, your MRA team, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the scenarios presented here. Welcome to station seven. This is the patient packaging station, and that includes spinal protection, vapor barrier, actually getting in the litter, putting the wheel, and just going down the road here just a little bit. Since we do have a lower right leg injury, we're going to form the bag around that. So we're using that bag for cervical protection, and we're also using it for spinal protection. We're gonna make sure that that's really fully formed under them. As we're evacuating the air out, you have to actively hold that mattress in the place where you want it to be. You need to actively keep that shape while you're going with the evacuation of the air. They're asking him, do they want him to have his arms in or out? 
that's a patient a preference uh, kind of a thing, a subject. So we're going to do a crisscross across the torso. We are going to do a crisscross. Yeah, and then straight across from the hips down. So now we've got him to the point where he's immobilized. They're doing exactly the right thing by tucking in those straps. One, two, three. Good having the head call it. That's great. That we have here, you'll see we have a blue tarp. We've actually got it set up so that we have one third on the short side and more on the longer side. Awesome job, nice and smooth. The, the straps that come with the litter are just fine on their own. They just cross over a buckle, we're good. But if we're gonna go vertical with this or if we're gonna do an external hoist on a helicopter, we really wanna have it so that if it starts spinning or he goes vertical or upside down, they don't shoot out the bottom of the litter one way or the other. So what we have set up here are opposing Vs or flying Vs that are gonna be interlaced through our subject's harness at a master point and in opposition so that they can't go one way or the other. You'll see that we've just got some one inch webbing with a, a loop we created here. Pull it through for girthing it and then we're gonna run this through the harness, maybe under his arms. What we're gonna do is just kind of like a modified trucker's hitch to get some good tension, but we won't do that until the other side is interlaced. So you, you hit with your... Yep, yeah, just go back. And so you'll notice we're interlocked here. If there were a malfunction with the harness or the harness wasn't fastened properly, he's still not going to go anywhere because we've got these interlocked. Once we've gotten to the point where our subject is in there and fastened in, burrito the feet, short side over, long side over, reverse roll. And so that everything is tucked in and that if water were to come down onto our subject, it would roll off. So the most efficient way to do this is have this person lay it over here to this person. The adjustable side should be on the top, and then that way you just feed it through like this on this side for this person. This person pulls back towards them. This is actually a, a two or a three person operation, this part, getting the wheel on. Make sure that we put that up underneath there, and there's four little pins that go into each one of those, and then we have a brake that we have to route out. So the brake line will come up, and go to the inside of the litter and then out and it'll go on the handle at the head once we get going. And all you're gonna do is lift up the tabletop while two people, one on each side of this wheel. Yeah, that's what the tabletop handles are really nice for. That's great. Get the wheel locked in place. The nice thing is, is the handles are ad adaptable. So if you have a side hill one way or the other or you're a different height than the previous person, pop the pin, rotate them, lock them, and you're good to go. We want to have our arms so that our skeletal muscles are doing the work, not short-armed like this, because as we know, fatigue is a real issue when you're on long trail carries, if you're doing this versus this. Let's go ahead and roll with it. Uh, let's, uh, let's start going forward, Andre. Right How far there? down do you want to go? Uh, there will be two people waiting for them. They're gonna do a handoff, bring our subject back up, lean them up, and then we're gonna get them out of the litter. First, Gary. Go ahead, do the transfer. Okay. Ready? You ready, Stella? Ready. Stabilize, Gary. You want to just grab the side just to help? You ready? Ready. Okay, go. All right, yours. Sean's got it. So now the nice thing is when Carrie goes down, we have a stable platform yeah. as long as Derek holds it to yeah. get him out. I would say if you've been in a litter immobilized for more than 20 minutes, it's a real concern. If you sit up too quick and hop out of the litter, which everybody likes to do, you're going to gray out and probably fall over. Now let's just go ahead and carefully get them out of here and just have somebody make sure they keep uh, stabilization on this. Your litter is not just a means of transport. It's something that protects your subjects from their environment. Protecting the spine, prote protecting cervical, preventing hypothermia or heat loss, and then lastly, protecting the subject and moving them safely down the trail without injuring our rescuers. Well guys, hopefully you got some good video of that and can reference it later. <laughs> <laughs> My alarm hasn't gone off As you know, this year we were focusing on the patient packaging uh, educational project and working with litters and mitigating hypothermia. In mitigating hypothermia, we use the tarp uh, as a vapor barrier. And the vacuum mattress actually makes a really fantastic conductive barrier to right. keep you from conducting your heat out. Um, if it was a colder day, we certainly could have added a uh, heating blanket like the Ready Heat blanket or hot packs and hot Nalgene bottles and things like that. A uh, rescue leader, how did Paul, how did that go for you? It went great. The team was uh, very helpful and it was really easy to use the system the way it was set up. So. You guys just finished here up at Station 7. How did things go for you? Oh, it went great. Uh, all the pieces fell into place and it's something that's really useful to, for us out in the field. And you guys use the uh, the tarp uh, to, to wrap the... Do the burrito wrap. Burrito wrap. Yep. We made one side really long and one side short so that the short side went in, long side went over and then you rolled it up. 
Very good. Kind of rolled it so the water rolled off. Uh, Amanda, as the patient, how did how did that go for you? It it went really well. There was a lot of communication. Uh, there was a lot of talking to me as the mm -hmm. patient, like telling me what was going on, which I appreciated. So, Steve, how did things go for you? It went really well. Yeah. Did Did you feel like you were adequately protected from hypothermia? When the sun was behind the cloud, it was comfortable and uh, not overly warm. It was a little bit sweaty in there, but that's okay. Oh, that's so good. My, I guess they did their job then. <laughs> I'd say so. Do you feel like the vacuum mattress uh, worked well for you? Oh, absolutely. I had limited movement. Not, I wasn't completely restrained though, so yeah. Um, yeah and it Felt was, like you could breathe okay? Breathe okay. Um, I could move my arms, which was you know, a little bit, but oh, enough wow. to like make me comfortable. So yeah, Great. it was Perfect. How did your neck feel? Do you feel like you could breathe okay with the vacuum mattress there? Breathing was not a problem whatsoever. Good. I kind of, uh, since it was an exercise, I wanted to peek around and see what was going on, but the mattress held my head in place and I couldn't really see anything. Yeah, so it restricted you, but, but, you, but not too tight. Right. That's the goal with spinal cord protection is we want to provide protection, in some cases, spinal motion restriction, but not immobilization, not where we're increasing extension of the cervical spine, possibly precipitating further injury and things like that. Securing you in the harness with the uh, flying V configuration or the V configuration going through right. a center point on your harness, yes. do you feel like you were pretty stable and secure in the litter? Oh yeah, I felt good. I had them uh, tip me up uh, onto my feet while I was strapped in the litter and, and uh, didn't move very far. But... Yeah, about an inch. Yeah. So that, that's pretty tolerable. Yeah. First, Ty, how did things go for you? Did you feel secure? Oh yeah, I yeah. felt like I was gonna fall out or anything like that. We've never used the tabletop setting and I thought that was great. And being able to like tilt the litter up or, you know, using the handles at the bottom mm -hmm. to get the wheel on. We've always done a straight lift. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'll be taking that home and, and uh, recommending we switch to guys. It went really well because uh, some people hadn't used that apparatus before, so they got to learn how to work the handles, how to work the straps, and how to keep the patient safe. Well, at first I was a little uh, skeptical because, you know, you, you're putting the, uh, the patient uh, on on these titanium handles, but after seeing it uh, hold, you know, Steve just fine, and. Uh, it was fantastic. One person can hold up the litter by themselves and the other ones can go underneath and, and locate the pins and put them in. Much more ergonomic for the rescuer um, and if we can get a patient from where they are into that uh, position, you know, that would be great. Um, the ride, like not bumpy at all, very smooth, it didn't bother anything. So it's, Good. Uh, well, thank you so much well, for coming out. Thank and for you for presenting, presenting this to us. Yeah. First, uh, in patient packaging, you want to develop a very secure package, a package that's not going to fall out of the litter or fall out of your SCED device as you're moving them through the backcountry. So a secure patient connection uh, was one of the hallmark talking points of today's series. Uh, one of the uh, discussion points was to use a V configuration going through a common point on the patient's harness right here so that they can't slide up and down inside the litter or inside the SCED. Also, we want to be very uh, conscientious of the mitigating of hypothermia and paying uh, special attention to the four areas of heat loss, conduction, evaporation, radiation, and convection. And we do that quite effectively with the burrito wrap, which fits nicely inside of a sked or inside of a litter. Um, the vacuum mattress ironically makes not only a great way to secure a patient, but also a way to help mitigate conductive heat loss. The vapor barrier of a tarp is also a great way to help prevent heat loss. And then adding other insulative layers as needed for further heat production. The ready heat blanket has been used and shown to uh, provide a great source of heat inside of the burrito wrap. Once you have the patient secure and wrapped up in the burrito wrap to keep them warm and dry, there are a couple other tidbits that you wanna be conscientious of. One is that we have a helmet on the patient, providing good helmet protection and perhaps even a litter shield or eye protection for the patient. We wanna be careful that our rescuers don't step over the patient, particularly if you have crampons on your feet. Ouch, that could hurt. Lastly, if the patient has a lower extremity injury, building a stirrup that's incorporated into your litter can really help them offload their injured extremity and, and put some weight on the uh, good extremity while they're being rescued from the environment. Lastly, talking about the vacuum mattress, not only is it good for helping to provide splinting and immobilization of a lower extremity injury, but it also is fantastic in providing spinal cord protection. Vacuum mattress provides spinal motion restriction by keeping their head uh, comfortable in an anatomically appropriate position, but not with rigid immobilization, which could cause further harm. 
Thank you very much for joining us and for uh, coming out for the Mountain Rescue Conference. We hope to see you in future years and that you benefit from this educational series. We just want to reach out and thank you to all the sponsors who came to support the Mountain Rescue Association, and particularly this year for Cascade Rescue, who provided the litter for these operations. <laughs>